Welcome to this edition of Meet Your Neighbor. We're here today to talk with lifetime resident Tom McIntyre and hear what he has to say. Good right. morning, Tom. Morning. And uh, thank you for meeting me here outdoors in Hopkinton on Mayhew Street today. We're here by the cemetery. We're not here for a burial, though. Mm -hmm. We're here uh, beside a special monument. And I know you have something to do with it, and I'm wondering if you could just tell a little bit about that as we get started. Well, um, it started out, there was, uh, this bell came out of the old Main Street Station. Uh, when they built the one that's there now, this bell used to be hung up in the bell tower, and they used to ring it, and everybody would come for the fire, because they'd hear it all over the middle of town. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was there was two bells. There was one in the Woodville Station. I found them both down behind, well, I kind of knew they were there, but I found them both behind the Woodville Station, and I kind of took them. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I brought them, and I refurbished them, and built this, and I built the one down in Woodville, mm -hmm. with some help from other people. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, the significance was, I mean, they're very old. This is this one is, uh, I believe, back in the 1880s or something, this bell was cast. And the other one was even older, the Woodville one. Mm -hmm. So, but, uh, and in the, in the old days, they'd ring the bell and everybody would come. And then when the fire's out, they ring the bell oh. twice, two times. Mm -hmm. So everybody in town knew the fire was out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good so, to know also. Yeah. But now we do it uh, when a fireman dies. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll give him the all out, you know, two rings twice mm -hmm. with the bell. We did a recent one down here of a fireman that died. Oh. And uh, it was pretty nice. So. And it's beside the monument over here. Yep. Uh, That's the fireman's uh, memorial. Mm -hmm. Every second week of every, second week of June, second Sunday in June, uh, they, the firemen come up here and they start at the fire station, they march up here, they do a prayer, they read the roll call of everybody that was a fireman, mm -hmm. everybody that died, uh, you know, that there had been a call fireman or whatever. So I just added this next to it mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. enhance uh, it a little. What inspired you to uh, create this and put it here? I, know, I just come up with these ideas. You come up with the ideas, <laughs> uh, and I understand you have many of them. I got a lot of ideas. <laughs> a little bit of Tom McIntyre all over Hopkinton, from what I understand. You have a few other monuments in town. Yeah, I got a few things I've been doing. I got a few more I'm gonna do eventually, but uh -huh. yeah. I'm slow at. Uh, problem is when you develop these things, then you got to maintain them. <laughs> uh -huh. And that's your job as well. I guess so. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I put the flowers in every year, and I, it just uh -huh. never ends, uh -huh. you know. So, uh -huh. but I don't mind doing it. I like doing it. So. So, um, and, and the other monuments uh, that you have created in town, they're similar uh, for uh, uh, fire department or other types yeah, of... Yeah, we did, um, uh, when they, we ripped down the gazebo uh, to make way for the new one, they asked me if I'd rip it down, I guess, mm -hmm. I'll do anything. Mm -hmm. um, so when we ripped it down, there was granite all around the outside, eight sides, it was an eight-sided... Uh, gazebo so we tried to save all the granite we could mm -hmm. so um, and the fire department had a sign out front that was dilapidated and it was wooden and it was kind of you know falling apart so mm -hmm. firefighter Santucci had come to me and said she said I'd really like to put a new you know but I'd like to have a granite one mm -hmm. do you got any ideas on there I got tons mm -hmm. of ideas <laughs> so he wanted something like the police station with the pink granite so I knew I had some granite from the gazebo mm -hmm. and uh, we got it you know, all done, and, and uh, then I, we had to figure out how we were going to mount it, mm -hmm. and we went to, uh, I went to Doug DeWolf in Newview, and, and said, I really need some help, you know, and he, he went way above, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they put, uh, they did the, uh, built it out of, uh, like a pink granite stone wall, mm -hmm. and they built the supports to hold it, and then they built the wall around the front so we can move the flagpoles down off the top of the building. The flagpoles are up on the top of the building, and, and Bob Santucci wanted to move them down because they were not practical mm -hmm. up on the top. The flags are always getting caught on the building and stuff. And so he said, we got to move those down. So, you know, with the help of a few people, and the Ashland Fire Department came with the ladder truck to help us take the flags off, I mean the poles off, and put them down. And Newview built the, the supports for that. And uh, geez, it came out really good. Mm -hmm. We're really happy with it. So, so a community effort, yeah. really, yeah. that you were involved. Just in. little things like that. 
you know, really help mm -hmm. make it nice. And uh, you have also spent part of your time as a volunteer firefighter as yeah, well. Yeah, I've been a volunteer since 19, I think 1974. Uh -huh. so. And uh, what got you started with that? Well, <laughs> um, back then we had a muster team. There was a bunch of us that used to go to musters and run musters and stuff. And then uh, at the time I wasn't on the fire department and, and the, the former chief, Arthur Stewart, said, hey, when are you going to get on the fire department? You know, your father's on it. And, Okay, so mm -hmm. that's when I got on, you know. Mm -hmm. Back then they gave you gear and just said, you know, go at it. Mm -hmm. They train you. It was and good. You have had to go out to some fires yeah, uh, through uh, the years. Yep, you know, there's been a lot of different ones over the years. There one that was most difficult that you remember? No, nah, the biggest one I can remember was Shadow Brook in Milford that we responded to. That was probably, but then again there was a lot of people there. You know, there was oh, really? a lot of towns. It was just a uh -huh. big condominium uh, place uh -huh. that just got out of control and mm -hmm. it just went on. It seemed like it went on forever mm -hmm. to get it out. But mm -hmm. um, So we responded over to Milford to that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it, you know. And it took a lot of you to put that one out. Yeah, it took a lot of towns, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. a lot of support. But that, but everybody's, you know, Milford and Hopkins work fantastic together. Mm -hmm. far, and they always have. I mean, mm -hmm. back to, you know, back those days when it was... Um, Arthur Stewart was the fire chief to today when, you know, mm -hmm. Kenny Clark's the fire chief. So mm -hmm. okay. they work. And Ashland's the same way. They've always worked well with those towns. Mm -hmm. So it really helps. It helps both towns out mm -hmm. immensely, you know, mm -hmm. because nobody's got enough people to do everything. But right. yeah. they really do a great job. You know? It's so. good to hear important for us to yeah, keep in mind. It is. That yeah. Helping each other beyond yeah. our circles also. Yeah. And then you also uh, work at your own business. Uh, yes. Which, uh, if, could you tell a little bit about that? Yeah, it's sand and gravel, landscape materials, crushed mm -hmm. stone, things like that. Um, I started in the trucking business in 1974, and it wasn't really third grade, but it seemed like it. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> um, so I started there, and then it evolved to, um, you know, I bought a piece of land that belonged to my father and uncles, and it had some material on it, and that's how I started in, in that mm -hmm. business in 1979, mm -hmm. and that then that just grew. Mm -hmm. I mean, just over the years, it's just crazy, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So, and I just love doing it, you know? Yeah. I yeah. just love equipment and trucks and bulldozers, and I always have since I was a little kid, so. Yeah. You mentioned you had early start uh, with uh, being in the landfill. Uh, well, yeah, my father had the dump, the town dump, which mm -hmm. Everybody went to on Saturday to dump this stuff. So mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but but he used to go down there on Saturdays. I used to go with him, and and uh, you know we'd hang around, pick the dump, and I'd I'd hang around all day just to drive the bulldozer home. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I just loved equipment and things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, kind of that stayed with you. Stayed with time. me forever. Mm -hmm. So and uh, working. Uh, as you do, uh, contributing to beautifying uh, the land, people's yards. And yeah, we sell a lot of mulches and materials, and uh, you know, a lot of landscapers come in and buy material from us. Mm -hmm. And and the townspeople have been great to me. I mean, they uh -huh. support me well, it incredibly. That way. So, uh, I was just wondering, uh, in the twenty, uh, in this century that we have, is there anything to, we need to be? mindful of to continue in our preservation of the earth that you're aware of and working closely with the earth well are you concerned yeah about? <laughs> i guess you you have to but you know mm -hmm. you also have to be able to continue coming up with materials and crushing rock and and you got to keep going mm -hmm. you know you got to keep supplies up and stuff so mm -hmm. i mean they cut down trees and they make mulch and there's all kinds of things that that go as part of it you know mm -hmm. so yeah. Uh, going backwards a little, um, how long have you lived in Hopkinton? Since I was born. Since you were born. 57 years. Uh-huh. So, uh, yeah. uh -huh. Never lived anywhere else. Never went away to college. Never went anywhere. No. So just uh -huh. been here. So. Mm -hmm. uh, so as a child growing up, you liked playing in the junkyard? Uh, I liked like playing at the dump and uh -huh. playing in dump. dirt right. and playing with toys mm -hmm. and trucks. Mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. And spend a lot of time outside then. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and how about your family, where you came from? Uh, where did they come from and how did they come to settle here? Well, the McIntyre side um, moved in here in the late 1800s. Mm -hmm. My father's father, 
moved down here, and he married somebody from Hopkinton that was a uh, um, a daughter of a McBride, mm -hmm. and the McBrides have been here eons longer. So you know, one side of my family's been here forever, and the McIntyre side came in the late 1800s. And my father was born in this town. My father and uncles were born in this town, and they lived, you know, here all their lives. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so it's kind of the way it goes. Uh huh. So you are a townie. Yeah, I'm a townie. <laughs> uh huh. What kinds of things would you say that you learned from your family? In I retrospect, guess, now. Well, I guess I didn't really realize, but uh, you know, getting involved in the community, doing things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I and I and I don't really know if it's from my father and grandfather, or if it's really from watching my kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, going through school and high school, and they did mm -hmm. so much. I mean, we never did volunteer work like they do now. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. the kids today up to high school, they do so many things, mm -hmm. different turkey, and they're out helping everybody to help the rest of them. It just, it's just, I think that's where you get a lot of it from. Mm -hmm. You know, I figured if my mm -hmm. kids can do it, I might as well get some stuff done, you know. Uh -huh. So, but, so and yeah. I like doing little projects and little things that make a difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of ideas. So. Not the time to do them all, but I got a lot of ideas. Uh -huh. Well, it's, it certainly sounds like you have put a lot in, of your ideas in action yeah. for the good of Pure Hopkinton. Ideas, yeah. And so you say you have uh, the inspiration of that from your family uh, and growing up as well as from your children, watching them and what they're involved with. Yeah, both I ways. mean, my father and grandfather and uncles were involved in the community. They did a lot of things between 250th anniversary and, you know, the 270. They did, they were involved in everything. Uh -huh. And my father worked in town all his life. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I think, but then I, the more I thought about it, I said, you know what? I, don't ever remember doing like volunteering and helping and like the mm -hmm. kids do nowadays. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're out helping everybody. This, you know, I think that's a big difference. They have that Martin Luther King Day where mm -hmm. they where they give back to the community, and I, mm -hmm. that that stuff didn't happen when I was mm -hmm. a kid, yeah. or I missed yeah. the boat or something. You know. Uh -huh. so. Yeah. But um, why do you think that's uh, important? I just think your community is so important. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's mm -hmm. what Hopkins. I mean, I don't know what the attraction is to Hopkins because I've lived here all my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I was young, the place was very rural, mm -hmm. and I'm the, I don't know why everybody likes it, but I'm mm -hmm. not going anywhere. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I mean, people come in and they just love Hopkins, and I, I can't tell what the attraction is because I've never lived anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but I know, you know, my wife's grown up in Hopkins. She never lived anywhere else either. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, we probably grew up a half a mile away from each other, you know? Wow. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are there any ways that you say uh, Hopkinton has changed over the well, years? Well, it's gotten bigger. I mean, there's, you know, it's obviously population changes everything. 495 changed things a little. I mm -hmm. think it made it a desirable place to live because people could get on 495 and get on the Mass Pike and be to work in Boston or Waltham or 128 area fast. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was still a nice town, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. I think that's part of it. You know, I don't really know, but I'm just shooting from the hip. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And uh, well, how about uh, your days in school? You have any uh, particular good school memories? Uh, yeah, how I never big liked was your class? <laughs> you didn't like school, <laughs> no? Uh -huh. You wanted to be to, out in the landfill there. I couldn't wait to get out and, <laughs> uh -huh. uh, yeah. you know, run equipment and drive yeah. trucks. Yeah. You know, that's what I mm -hmm. wanted to do. Would you say you had any particular mentor uh, growing up and uh, living the life that you uh, wanted to live, that you're living now? Probably my, my father Your mostly. Father. You know, he was into uh -huh. equipment and stuff. Even though he worked for the town, he liked bulldozers and trucks. And he always, you know, that was, mm -hmm. yeah. so it kind of, you know. And when I started, he, he was pretty excited. So. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, after high school, uh, you went on to study, or you went on no, to I bought work a truck. At, on the trucks? I bought a truck uh -huh. when I was um, 18. And you transported? Or? I, I worked for other people hauling, hauling. Um, mm -hmm. gravel, mm -hmm. sand, dirt, different mm -hmm. things. Got into the working truck rental. Mm -hmm. and, and the then, roots of your business then? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then it evolved to selling my own material. Mm -hmm. So, Which somewhere is in it just, I don't know. It's hard to remember, but it just somewhere uh -huh. it just in the nineties it just went crazy. Uh -huh. you know? uh -huh. yeah. But I mean, every day I get up, I love doing it. So. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's one of the great things I, yeah. uh, people can say. Um, 
in moving on to uh, thinking outside of work, uh, you said you haven't traveled much. Uh, well, uh, my wife and I of... uh, go to Florida you for go a few to weeks every. So you like it there? Every winter. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's fun. Miss a couple of weeks of Hopkinton winter. Yeah, we can get by. Uh-huh. They'll get by without me. Uh huh. So. Is there anywhere in the world you like to see? Uh, or just here and there is good? No, I uh-huh. think I'm pretty... You're good. Pretty well. Uh-huh. Good around here, you know. Anything on your bucket list you're willing to share? Uh, I don't know. I went to uh, Michigan a few years ago uh-huh. to a World War... I'm, I'm very interested in World War II things. Uh-huh, yeah. So, um, might be a monument for that someday. Ah, but uh, uh-huh. mm. I'm very interested in that. My mm-hmm. father... and one of his uncles in World War II. Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, I went to a reenactment out in Michigan. I brought a, a Sherman tank out a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a group in Hopkinton that has a bunch of equipment like that. Mm-hmm. And they, um, so we, I put it on my low bit and we shipped it out there. And, wow. You know, it was pretty, it was an air show, in a, but it was all World War II era stuff. It was very mm-hmm. interesting, very mm-hmm. interesting. A lot of people had a lot of stuff there. Mm-hmm. So a that's kind of, Historian in you and a I bit guess. of artist Only, of well, the land. World War II stuff I'm very interested <laughs> yeah. in. You know, uh-huh. yeah. uh, Important not, generation. Not a lot of other stuff, you know. But How War about II. the Horribles Parade? What can oh, Horribles Parade. You have a part in that, and that's an annual that's tradition. That's quite a time. Mm-hmm. So. What happens then? Well, it was started, uh, my grandfather started when my, my father and uncles were small. Uh, he used to, Fourth of July, they'd, they'd have a cookout or whatever, and they'd the kids would march up and down the streets and they'd dress up and they'd, you know, do different mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. They'd march up and down Pleasant Street. Well, mm-hmm. and then it got to, it got bigger. Other people joined in, neighbors, and then it, then they started parading all around town. It started mm-hmm. back in 1930. And then uh, somewhere in the 50s, the whole town got involved. I mean, they all, everybody would put floats in. Uh, you know, they'd, they'd start right at 29 Pleasant Street where, where I live now. Mm-hmm. Everybody would back in and my grandfather was involved in everything, and he'd supply cray paper because he worked at Denison, and everybody would come there and decorate their floats, and then they'd start the parade, and they'd go all around town, and then end up down at 117 Wood Street behind the Islamic Church, mm-hmm. where my business is now. That was a big field, and the whole town would go there for a party. I mean, there would mm-hmm. be pony rides, there'd be food, there'd be everything there, mm-hmm. wow. and it was just it was just a, a town-wide thing, but the town was a lot smaller then. It seemed like everybody, but it, everybody was involved in that. Mm-hmm. So, but. Oh, sounds like a good time. So, how many years is it? 80, 81 now or something. Uh, what's uh, the most memorable uh, float you can think of through the years? I don't know. Too, I, too many? Yeah, it's just, yeah. I, uh-huh. I, my memory's about as good as nothing. <laughs> you know, so. Well, but I know. There's been some good ones. Uh-huh. And then in some years, it's kind of fizzled down to like nothing. Yeah. You know, sometimes uh-huh. the parade's just nothing mm-hmm. <laughs> it's fire trucks and fire stuff. trucks yeah. uh-huh. but my niece and my brother are kind of you know lily and lenny holden ran it for a lot of years they revived it back in the uh early 80s they got mm-hmm. it going again because mm-hmm. it kind of died off you know mm-hmm. it was big in the 50s and 60s and it kind of died off in the 70s and then it got big again but they revived it mm-hmm. and they and they put a lot of time into it and uh revived it and sometimes they'll you'll have if it's during the week there'll be a lot of people around if it's a mm-hmm. weekend Everybody's out of town and nobody mm-hmm. goes to it, but it's it's turned into kind of a water balloon fight now. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> so people seem to like to throw water balloons. They throw uh-huh. candy and stuff, but it uh-huh. seems to be I a water candy. fight now. But mm-hmm. And I didn't start that. So. <laughs> but, uh, and my niece and Len- Lenny and Lily Holden kind of wanted to step back mm-hmm. a little, so my niece and brother are kind of taking care of things uh-huh. now. Well, so. it seems one of its kind, and why is it called Horribles? You ever seen it? <laughs> <laughs> I have. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You answered uh, your own question. <laughs> I, I think it's delightful. It should be called yeah, Delightful no. Parade. That's right. It's special. <laughs> uh, and how about uh, the marathon? Uh, you've been uh, part of the marathon, marathon I've, through I've the years been there also. Quite a few marathons, uh-huh. the starting. And, uh, you know, I can remember when I was a kid it started with just a few hundred people it seemed like and mm-hmm. they used to bring them up to mm-hmm. in front of St. John's Church they put mm-hmm. snow fence around and they'd keep them all contained in there till like five minutes or twelve uh-huh. they'd walk them down to the starting line and then they'd all so they could contain them all and then they'd all 
head off to Boston. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah. then as the years uh -huh. went on, it just it's so big now. Uh -huh. It's just yeah. Yeah. enormous. Yeah. You know, and I, I've like I said, I've lived in town all my life, and I've never run it. So mm -hmm. maybe someday. But maybe. I doubt mm -hmm. it. Uh huh. So. Uh huh. <laughs> but my daughter's running it this year. Oh wow! And her first time. First time. Uh -huh. Pretty excited. Oh, so. that is exciting. Yeah. Be sure to cheer the for The goal her. is to finish. <laughs> That's right. It always is. <laughs> so. Well, and uh, so you mentioned your daughter. Uh, so you uh, raised your own family here as yeah. well. And yeah. uh, your children now? Uh, I have a daughter and a son. Uh -huh. My son's in his last year of law school at Suffolk. Mm -hmm. He graduates in May. Mm -hmm. And my daughter's in her last year at Northeastern. Mm -hmm. And she graduates in May also. Uh -huh. so, oh. And she's going to be an elementary education teacher. Oh, wow. Uh, that's so. wonderful. Congratulations yeah. to you and your wife. Thanks. And so, uh, yeah, so life in later years, and not little wee children you're bringing up to the ho horrible sprays no, anymore. Not no, anymore. <laughs> no, uh -huh. no. And so, uh, are there any other uh, hobbies or sports or art that you're involved with in your whatever spare time you have? Well, uh, I'm big on, uh, I have a couple of antique fire trucks that belong to the town of Hopkinton. Um, so I, you know, I go to parades and shows and different things with it. I have some antique trucks also and mm -hmm. equipment. Um, I'm interested in old stuff, obviously. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I guess I was born in the wrong era or something. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's fun. I restored one of the fire trucks. Wow. And they both belong to Hopkinton. One's a 1941 and one's a 1955. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it just prayed pieces now, but mm -hmm. they've done their share of firefighting. Mm -hmm. right? so, mm -hmm. so it's pretty interesting. And you play some hockey? Yeah, I play a little hockey. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Play with some old guys on one night, and I play with some young kids that I coached when my son was five and six uh -huh. on another night. So. And how old are they now? 24, 25. 25. So, so it's fun. They're, yeah, they're yeah, I don't think they really good. want me on the team anymore because no. uh -huh. I'm too old and slow, but. Yeah, I guess they keep me around. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So. <laughs> you're helpful, obviously. Yeah. And still they keep an eye on me. You're the coach? No, uh, no, I just show up. And oh, play. you show up. We uh -huh. don't need to coach each other. Uh -huh. you know, we can get enough trouble without coaches. Uh -huh. so, but it's fun. It's mm -hmm. Beats laying on the couch and doing nothing. Uh, so. uh -huh. Yeah, well, it yeah. doesn't seem like there's much time for that. Yeah, no, not much. Mm. Well, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you seem to make the most of life uh, when you found it has been hard. What would you say gets you through the challenges, uh, the rougher parts of life? Uh, I've been pretty lucky. I mean, I don't really, I mean, hard times, I mean, everything, you can't control how things go. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't control the weather. I mean, we didn't mm -hmm. plow much snow this winter. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm okay with that, you know. Last mm -hmm. winter was ridiculous, you know. Mm -hmm. So you can't, every time you want to control things, you can't. So mm -hmm. I just take what comes and mm -hmm. figure out how to do it, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. one way or the other. As it comes. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're in the philosophical part of oh, okay. the interview. Yeah. <laughs> if you had one day left, what would you like to do with it? Oh, boy. Putting the pressure on me, huh? <laughs> well, it would probably be involved being in Hopkinton, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But just hanging around with my family, I guess, mm -hmm. would be yeah. the best thing. Mm -hmm. Take a spin on the fire trucks, I don't know. A spin on the fire trucks, uh huh. One last horrible parade. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Well, that's a good thought. Yeah. And um, how about for advice? What would you say is the best advice you've ever received for living your life uh, from someone? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, advice from somebody. Mm. I don't know. My father used to always say, don't sweat the small sh mm -hmm. So, and I guess that's, you know, good advice. Mm -hmm. Just don't worry about little things, you mm -hmm. know, because mm -hmm. there's bigger things to worry about. Yeah. How about your own, uh, now that you're on the older hockey team and a little later on in life. <laughs> what is your hope now for the future as you see your own daughter and son graduating and yeah, going I, off? Yeah, see them gradu graduate and... Yeah. Uh, but for know, the general uh, future Wait for generation. grandkids, I guess. And, grandkids, uh -huh. And they can hang around with me and uh -huh, yeah. play, play with my stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's a good play thought. Play with my toys. Mm -hmm. so. And what, what advice do you have now to offer? Well, I think it's, if there's so much to do in, in the town, in the yeah, community. Yeah. It mm -hmm. just takes little things to do 
to make it better. You know, but mm-hmm. there's a lot of people. There's a lot of good people in Hopkins. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people. I mean, I know. Whenever I do anything, if I pick up the phone, they're there. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, my brother's always there. Uh, Bobby Clack lives across the street. If I need him, he's right over here helping me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brendan Ted Stone, Artie Pine. There's just a long list of people that are right there. Mm-hmm. Bob Santucci. I mean, mm-hmm. you call them up and boom, they're there. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you know. Cause, but I don't usually call too many people. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. But I know if I if I need help, they're right. Joe Capabianco has always helped me. He helped me dig this and mm-hmm. cement it in. And it's mm-hmm. just we did it in one day. We do everything in mm-hmm. one wow. day. Wow! Wow! Yeah. yeah. So usually just one phone call and people yeah. come and help. People that come way. and help. Yeah. But that's the way the town's always been for me. as uh-huh. long as I can remember as a kid. I just can remember everybody helping on everything. You uh-huh. know? But, I mean, maybe it was the the group that my father and uncles were involved in. I don't know, but it just seemed like everybody was right there to help. Mm-hmm. You know, no matter what it was. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think it's still that way. I mean, there's so many, and and it's not townies. I mean, there's so many good people that have moved into town that mm-hmm. really. Mm-hmm. make a big difference you know they get on the boards they make the town mm-hmm. the town's nice you know we got a beautiful school yeah. the best around I mm-hmm. mean mm-hmm. and they did a great job building it you mm-hmm. know and they did a great job got more for their money than any town around ever did mm-hmm. I mean I think the setup up there I don't think you can find that anywhere mm-hmm. you know so and they got the fields for the kids the youth sports and it's just it's everything mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. it really is you know they really you know, it takes a lot of people to do that, but everybody mm-hmm. seems to be pulling in the same direction. Mm-hmm. I mean, awesome. there's always people that, you know, disagree and mm-hmm. agree, but that's part of it. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't have everybody agree. That's a nice way of uh, looking at it and yeah. looking where you come from in your own roots yeah. and uh, the life you've led, what you've seen happen here. Uh, yeah. That it's it's not just one person about that or one against another, but it really is uh-huh. everybody working together and, and you really live that life. And, yeah. Yeah. In what you do, all you do, you uh, have made a lot happen and beautified uh, the town a lot and get fire Well, if I trucks. didn't like doing it, I wouldn't do it. So. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> it's that simple. So. <laughs> Part you of know, your but, philosophy also. But, yeah. 